is going on YouTube. You are back at the Prez. We're in the home gym today. Today I'm going to be bringing you a video talking to you guys about the difference between high carb diets and high fat diets. When you should utilize each, the benefit of each, and the disadvantage of each. And this is going to be touching off of my most recent videos you would have saw me talking about. I put a video off of my high protein, low carb breakfast. I then put up a full day of eating, talking about how I've been shifting my focus now into more of an animal based, higher fat, lower carbohydrate diet for myself, something that's always worked for me in the past. So today we're going to talk about high carbs, low carbs, difference of each, when you should, when you should utilize each. So, backtrack a little bit. About three weeks ago, I reached the peak weight of about 176, 177 pounds. Uh, on an empty stomach morning laying, right? And I was fully clothed, tra training close to around 179, 180 pounds, which is the heaviest that I've ever been. Also, I noticed in my videos, I was starting to look a little sloppy. My stomach was getting puffy. I was starting to lose definition. And performance-wise, you know, training, my endurance and everything, my reps, they were all starting to see a decrease in performance, right? That's due to the fact, again, I was starting to accumulate a little bit too much body fat. But the goal over the last seven months for myself was to bulk up. I wanted to gain weight. My goal was to get as close to 180 pounds as possible. Last year in 2022, it's 2024 now, but all through 2022 to 2023, I reached a high weight of 175, and then I cut back down for the summer of 23, and I was weighing around 166, 167 pounds lean. Not quite 10%, but right around 11% body fat. Really lean, nice and defined, good physique. Then again, my goal this winter, this past winter, was to get over 175. I wanted to bulk, like I said, close to 180. But like I said, I started getting sloppy and everything, so I knew, all right, it's time to start reversing back down, starting to clean up the diet, losing some body fat. So high carb, low carb. What I did throughout that whole seven months of bulking was I was on a predominantly high carb diet, eating around 35 to 3,600 calories daily, with about 400 grams of carbs. That's about 45% or 50% of my total calories coming from carbohydrates. Remember, if I'm eating 33, 35, if I'm eating 3,500 calories, 400 grams of carbs, that's 1,600 calories coming from carbohydrates. 1,600 calories is about 45% of 3,500, right? So predominantly, I was on a very high carb diet. Protein was falling around 200 to 225 grams of protein, which is around 30%. And the remaining calories were coming from fat. My fats typically always stay between 80 to about 100 grams of 100 grams of fat a day, which was on the lower end. So fat was the least, uh, the least valuable or the least total value of macronutrient going towards my total daily calories. And that was because, again, in order for me to put on all the size, in order for me to train heavy and train intensely, carbohydrates are going to fuel your workouts. So if you guys, if your goal is to gain weight, gain muscle, carbohydrates are going to be very important. And when you have a high carbohydrate diet, it's also what's called muscle sparing. Meaning if you're in a calorie surplus, you don't have to worry about so much eating over one gram of protein per pound of body weight, right? Because again, like I said, carbohydrates are muscle sparing. Your body stores carbohydrates when you have muscle predominantly in the muscle. They get stored as glycogen in the muscle bellies, right? If you're someone that doesn't train and eat all those carbohydrates, those carbohydrates will have nowhere to store. That's where you start seeing people, that's why the standard American diet is so messed up because it's high in carbohydrates and high in fats all together. Your body only knows energy sources, right? So if you're somebody who has no muscle mass, you don't work out, you eat a very high carb diet, your body's going to have what's going to be called insulin sensitivity, right? Insulin resistance, I'm sorry, you're going to be insulin resistant. Meaning, your body's going to spike insulin so many times throughout the day because you're going to be eating carbs, for carbs, carbs, carbs all day long. Your body's not going to utilize them. Your body's going to constantly spike insulin, release insulin from the pancreas, and it's going to do its best to shuttle that sugar out of the bloodstream and where it wants to go. But if it has no muscle mass on your body to shuttle that blood sugar to, Inevitably, it's going to be stored back in the liver and also stored in fat cells as fat. And that's how people start accumulating more body fat when they eat a high-carb diet, right? So people will say, oh, fat makes you fat. And not necessarily. Carbs don't inherently make you fat either. It's eating in a surplus and you don't have anywhere for your body to store those macronutrients. And that does not mean that if you don't work out, you should eat a high-fat diet in a surplus either. 
Because the surplus is a surplus. If you're eating a surplus, inevitably you're going to be gaining body fat. Just like myself, I train on the regular. I've been training for 12 plus years. I went from 160 something pounds this spring lean to 180 almost, right? But again, I gained body fat and I work out, right? So inevitably, regardless if your goal is to build muscle, if you're in a surplus, you're going to be gaining fat. But again, if your goal is, if, you're, if you train, if you're an athlete and you want to get bigger, that's when you should follow a high carbohydrate diet. And when you have a high carbohydrate diet, that also means the fat should be low because again, your body knows energy sources. So if you have a high carbohydrate and a high fat diet, you will inevitably store more body fat because it's very hard for your body to just store carbohydrates as body fat when you're a trained athlete and you have muscle mass on your body. Because again, your body will be most efficient at shuttling that, those blood sugar, those carbohydrates into the muscles, which again is going to be the most advantageous thing for you if your goal is to get bigger and stronger muscles and gain weight, right? So that's why if your goal is to put on size, bulk up, gain muscle size, gain mass, get stronger in the gym, I would recommend then to eat a high carbohydrate diet because it's going to benefit your overall athletic performance. It's going to help you train better in the gym. It's going to help with recovery. Now, on the flip side, a high carbohydrate diet. Again, any diet, whether it's high carb, high fat, regardless, if you're in a surplus, you're going to gain body fat. Now, that body fat, is, that body fat gain is minimized depending on the amount of the surplus you're in and if you have muscle mass on your body. Now remember this guys, carbohydrates, one gram is always worth four calories, one gram of protein is always worth four calories, one gram of fat is worth nine calories. So it's actually a lot easier to overeat fat. So if you're eating in a surplus and you're trying to do it with a high fat diet, you're probably gonna be more inclined to overeat and be in a too high of a surplus, which in turn will make you accumulate more body fat. But again, some of the disadvantages of a high carbohydrate diet is Look at the word itself, carbohydrate. It has the word hydrate in it. That means that your body is going to store more water naturally the more carbohydrates you take in. All that water storage is what leads to that puffy look. It keeps the definition away, especially if you're in a surplus, right? So now you're accumulating body fat and you're also accumulating a lot of water retention. And that's the first thing that tends to go when people go on a diet is the water weight. You always say, oh, I lost the water weight. It comes back so fast. Yeah, because you go back to right eating your normal, typical high carb, high fat diet, and you just start storing all that water weight again, right? So if you're on a high carbohydrate diet, inevitably you're going to look puffier. You're going to be, you, you will be hydrated more, right? Your muscle bellies will be hydrated, but in turn, you're going to look fuller. But fuller also comes with fluffiness in the stomach, fluffiness in the midsection, taking away from that definition. And now look, guys, I've been on about a two-week lower carbohydrate diet. And just after two weeks, you can start to see a little more muscle definition in my body. I still have body fat, I still didn't lose all the body fat, but I lost a lot of the water retention that I was holding on to, right? That just comes with the carbohydrate sources that I now switched over to. Because again, I never say I eliminated carbs, I'm still eating carbs, I'm just not eating a high carb diet at the moment. So, high carb diets, great for building muscle, great for performance in the gym, great for recovery, Great for building overall mass, helping you build mass, especially if you train. Great for replenishing the muscles. Now, when would you want to take a higher, higher fat diet, lower carbohydrate diet? That's when, in my opinion, when somebody that's trying to lean out, somebody that's trying to spare, to retain as much muscle as possible. Because remember, in order to lean out, regardless, you could do it on high carbs, you could do it on high fat. The main thing in order for you to lean out and lose weight is you now have to be in a calorie deficit. You're in a calorie surplus to gain weight, you have to be in a calorie deficit to lose body fat, right? And again, you could do it with a high carb diet, you could do it with a high fat diet. But again, high carbs, regardless, are going to cause you to store more water. They're going to cause you to start to stay a little more puffy. Now, also, when you're in a deficit, the first thing that your body wants to eliminate or spare is muscle because muscle is cost effective. Muscle is taxing on the nervous system. It's taxing on the overall body, right? It takes a lot to support muscle. So now when you're in a deficit, it's even more important to have higher protein. More, in my opinion, more than one gram per pound of body weight. Closer to that 1.2 to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight. So let's just say you weigh 150 pounds. One point, you'd be eating close to 200 to 225 grams of protein a day in a cut, in a deficit because now your body is losing fat, and the last thing you want your body to do is lose muscle, right? Remember, the muscle is what your body didn't want to strip away first, because fat is what 
You have an abundance of fat. Fat stores energy in your body. Muscles don't store energy. Muscles store carbohydrates, but muscle bellies themselves store amino acids. And that's what's going to strip. That's what makes a smaller muscle. When you start to strip those amino acids out of the body, the muscle starts to atrophy, right? Deflate. The way we combat that is eating a higher protein diet. A higher protein diet is naturally going to come with higher fat levels, especially if you're eating fattier cuts of meat, 85, 15 beef, ribeyes, strip steaks, things like that, right? Those are going to bring fat and protein. And in my opinion, the best way to shred out, again, you don't have to eliminate carbohydrates, but now shift your carbohydrate focus to more fruits. Get rid of the grains. So the best bulking carbohydrates, so let's take a quick step back again. Carbohydrates, if you're bulking, you're on a high carbohydrate diet, the best carbohydrates that you should be consuming are ones that are easy to digest because you're going to be wanting to consume a lot of them, right? You don't want to eat a meal that's very hard and very, very fibrous meal. I'm not gonna, so you wouldn't want to eat 200 grams of carbohydrates from broccoli in one sitting, right? Because that's going to be a huge bowl of greens, a huge bowl of fiber, and it's going to fill you up way before you can even finish it that, right? But in, in order for you to finish that, you would feel extremely bloated. It would be very hard to digest, right? Easy source of carbohydrates to digest, which are the things that I was eating on my bowl. Sourdough bread, white rice, pastas, things like that, right? Easy, calorie-dense carbohydrates that are low in fat. But again, the abundance of carbohydrates, inevitably you're gonna make you store a little bit more water, make you look more puffy. But you want things that are easy to digest, things that you can eat in bulk and get them down very easily and be hungry again, digest again very easily. Remember, you would feed an infant white rice, you, would, you wouldn't feed an infant brown rice, right? You would feed an infant, you know, cream of rice, what I was eating pre-workout all the time. So these softer foods, breads, things like that, easy to digest carbohydrates are gonna be your best friend when you're trying to load them up and bulk up. Now, on the flip side, let's go back to the higher fat now, let's go on to a lower carb side. We don't have to eliminate carbs, but now we want to shift the focus of carbohydrates. So you want to start to eliminate the starchier carbohydrates and focus on more fruits. Maybe some sweet potatoes, some squashes, zucchinis, things like that. More green. It doesn't have to be fibrous carbohydrates. It doesn't have to be broccolis. Because some of those, again, can cause digestive issues in themselves. And I'm not a big fan of them. So my main carbohydrate sources at the moment, now that I'm on a higher fat, lower carbohydrate diet, lots of fruit, bananas. Berries, mango, pineapple, blueberries, pomegranate seeds, things like that, right? Oranges, orange juice. I have a juicer. I juice my own orange juice. More whole food sources of carbohydrates, less starchy carbohydrates. They're going to store less water. They're going to naturally be higher in fiber, but good beneficial fiber for your gut. Not plant defense fibers that greens have, like kale and asparagus and broccoli. Things like that have plant defenses that make it harder to digest. Fruits. Are what your body wants to eat, right? They're they're appealing, they're nice in color because they're that's what you know, that was what this was, world was created, what your body to eat off of, right? They're appealing, even in, back in the ancestors' days. If you would see a bunch of kale, if you would see a bunch of strawberries, what do you think is gonna be more appetizing to eat? The strawberries, right? So they would go for the strawberries. The kale would be like when they're poor and they or if they just couldn't afford or find any other types of food, they would scavenge off like the plants, things like that. So, higher fat diet, easier for cutting, you can store less water. Then your body's gonna shift from burning glucose to burning more fats. It's gonna become primarily the source of your energy now, it's gonna be fats. People say that's why people are running the keto diet, right? Because they start to run on ketones. So if you keep the carbohydrates low, less spikes in insulin, less chance to become insulin resistant, you become more metabolically flexible because now you have less spikes in insulin. So then when you do introduce those carbohydrates, when you need to do a refeed day, because again, I recommend someone who's on a low carb diet, and if you're training consistently, remember your muscles store glycogen, that's what's gonna make the muscle look full. So let's just say, for instance, I'm going four days low carb, which on those four days I'm having a higher fat diet. On that fifth day, which I would make sure it's a training day, I would shift it, I would go back to a high carb diet, lower fat for one day, replenish the glycogen stores, let your body know, okay, we, we can still handle carbohydrates, that metabolic flexibility increases, your body becomes more efficient at burning fats, more efficient at burning carbohydrates, you become more insulin sensitive, which is your body's efficiency at using insulin, and then you go right back to lower carb again. So you go four days low carb, four days high fat, one day high carb, replenish the glycogen stores, and you go right back to a lower carb, high fat diet, 
in that deficit to help your body shred out. So, high carbs when you're trying to bulk, gain muscle, gain weight. Lower carb, high fat when you're trying to shred. I didn't say eliminate the carbs, I said lower carbs. Switch the carbohydrate sources. When you're bulking, you want to be eating more easy to digest, starchy carbohydrates, potatoes, rices, pastas, breads, things like that. When you're cutting, fruits, squashes, zucchini, things like that, oranges, things of that nature, more whole food sources, more fruits, again, more watery sources of carbohydrates. Again, fruits are going to be predominantly made of water, right? Even though the carbohydrates are going to store water, no. That means they're going to be lower in calories. So 100 grams of strawberries compared to 100 grams of white rice, weight, weight out, that 100 grams of rice is going to give you a lot more calories compared to 100 grams of strawberries, right? So that's how you make the switch, guys. And obviously, if you're in a deficit, you're going to want that lower calorie. So higher fat, lower carb, you guys are looking to shred out. Higher carb, lower fat, you guys are looking to bulk up. I hope this gave you a little insight and broke it down to make it a little simpler for you guys to understand the differences of each diet, when you should utilize each, and how to utilize each to your advantage. You can cycle them through the season the same way I do. Spring, summertime, I'm typically lower carb, higher fat when I want to shred out. Fall, wintertime, when we're, you know, when we're trying to bulk up, when we're covered up, increase the carbs. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Like it. Leave a comment if you have a question. I always get back to you guys. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Like the video, helps your eyes out. Share with your friends and your family. If you're not subscribed, you already know. Smash that subscribe button. You can see we got the Bar Natural hoodies on. You can get yourself some merch. Bar Natural. Bar Natural Fitness.com, guys. Peace out. Bar Natural. And they all love to talk, you know they do that shit the most Think you on my level, boy, but you ain't even close